Good evening and welcome. Starting with our big story this hour, climate change is real and is happening at a faster pace than we once thought. A recent research paper shows Greenland's three largest glaciers may melt faster than even the worst case predictions. Time-lapse images of a large carving event have emerged from Greenland's Helheim Glacier and using a combination of aerial photographs and field data, a study published in the journal Nature Communications found that the three largest glaciers in Greenland could melt faster than even the worst case warming predictions. These glaciers hold enough frozen water to lift the global sea levels by 1.3 meters and has already contributed to more than 8 millimeters rise in global sea levels. This development could have huge consequences for the rate of global sea level rise. Ice sheet loss takes place even in ideal conditions. The melting of ice caps is a naturally occurring phenomenon. It is driven by shifts in wind and ocean currents. When warm waters get near the glaciers, they melt. But human-caused warming has altered the climate and is changing how the winds and ocean interact with the ice sheet, therefore influencing the amount of ice loss. The situation is concerning. Leaders around the world are doing their bit to combat the rising temperatures. On Tuesday, tech giant Jeff Bezos named the 16 environmental organizations that will be getting the first chunk of his $10 billion fund for climate action. Bezos made this announcement via Instagram. Collectively, the organizations will get $791 million. The fund is part of the CEO's pledge to support scientists, activists, NGOs, and organizations working to protect the environment. We are being joined now by Anders Anko Bayerk, who is an assistant professor at the Department of Geoscience at the University of Copenhagen. Thank you for your time this evening. Now, this study published in Nature shows that the three biggest glaciers in Greenland seem to be melting faster than even the worst case warming scenario. This is, of course, very concerning. Take us through the findings of the study. Yes, thank you for inviting me to talk. Yeah, and this, this study, um, we have approached it in a way that um, we have not done before, and that's by looking at the past 120 years. Um, we did that because we know exactly how the climate was in those 120 years, and and by now using new methods, we could, we could find out how these very big and very important glaciers for sea level rise, how they were affected by the last 120 years of climate change. And what we found out was that that um, they actually melted quite a lot. There was a uh, huge amounts of ice that was brought from the land to the ocean. Um, and what we th then do is we compare this to the best models that we have that are predicting the future. And we say, um, uh, with, with the temperature change we're expecting in the future, how much are these models predicting that these glaciers will lose? And the results show that, that, um, that they are predicting uh, a fairly similar amount of what was lost in the 100, last 120 years. But uh, the important thing is that in the future, it will get much, much, much warmer than what we saw in the last 120 years. Uh, and therefore, we think um, and we are quite sure that these models are underestimating uh, the actual loss that will happen in the future. Right. Uh, Professor, then just how much worse is this scenario than previously thought, and what are the repercussions of this? Yeah, and then that, that's a good question. Um, but, but to answer that, we, we, we have to understand the way that our predictions work. And the way they work is that we take um, all the information we have about how glaciers are functioning, and all the information we have about um, uh, climate, in the future, and we put this into a model, a computer model, that simulates what will happen in the future, similar to a, a weather model. Um, and we know that this is not um, reality, what will actually happen, but it's our best guess. And our best guess has said that these glaciers would, would lose uh, 9 to 15 millimeter uh, by the year of, of um, 2100. Um, maybe that's not a lot uh, when you think about global sea level rise, um, that's one and a half centimeter. Um, but it's, it's in a climate which is in the Arctic three degrees warmer than now. 
what, then what we saw was um, uh, in the last 120 years, it was, has, uh, temperature has increased uh, roughly one degree and has lost a similar amount. Um, this is measured. Um, so so if, if glaciers are reacting to the same change in the future as they were in the past, um, it could be two to three times what we are predicting right now. Right now, we know that the sea levels are already rising significantly. We have seen some of the consequences of this, including countries losing land mass faster than predicted. Mm -hmm. This then means that millions of people will be displaced. Take us through some of the things that are um, in place in terms of the, the Paris Climate Agreement. These objectives, are they enough? Is enough being done? Uh, yeah, you, yeah. From, from my point of view, uh, we know exactly um, what can be done and what needs to be done. Um, as a scientist, it's, it's fairly simple that we know that um, most of the warming and therefore also most of the melt that we are seeing um, and sea level rise is uh, caused by human activity. Um, so that's the one key where we can change something and we can change it fairly rapidly. And unfortunately, um, on a global scale, um, definitely not enough is being done. It's, it's, it's too slow what's being done. Right. We have heard from uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson recently that uh, the objectives of uh, f phasing out fuel cars by the year 2035 has now been brought forward by five years. Other European countries are following suit. Uh, what, uh, what other moves will need to be made? Fossil fuel cars are obviously a huge problem, but many more things need to be taken into account. That's true. We, we have to do as much as we can. Um, and we have to do it on, on all the levels where it's possible. And um, there, there, there has been some, some um, misunderstandings about um, cutting, cutting fossil fuel alone uh, will save us. Um, this is something that will take a long time, uh, especially on a global scale. Um, and there are many other things that has to be done to, to stop uh, CO2 from entering our atmosphere. And also we have to do the opposite. We have to bring uh, CO2 from our atmosphere and back onto the planet. And that could be by forestation or, and also not by deforestation. Um, and, and it's something that we, we uh, should not wait with. We, have, we should do it right now because everything we do now uh, is something that we do not have to do uh, in the future where things most likely are looking much worse than they are now. Right, and Professor, is there a tipping point, and uh, have we have we passed that? Yeah, it's a it's a good question, um, and it's uh, very difficult to answer. In in terms of sea level rise, um, the tipping point um, it would be uh, if we reach a state of irreversible loss, where uh, glaciers are not able to. Uh, uh, recreate themselves again and and that's something that will happen if warming continues um, on the other hand should we get a cooling in the future then the glaciers can start to build up and become bigger and capture some of this water um, there's uh, also talks about tipping points in Antarctica where some very big and extremely important glaciers uh, could go unstable and and reach a reach a point where where they are looking at uh, many meters of sea level rise of irreversible uh, ice loss. We have not reached that point yet. Right. Thank you very much for joining us, Anders. That's uh, very interesting and uh, very concerning indeed.